Roger II was king of Sicily, son of Roger I of Sicily and successor to his brother Simon. He began his rule as Count of Sicily in 1105, became Duke of Apulia and Calabria in 1127, and then King of Sicily in 1130. By the time of his death at the age of 58, Roger had succeeded in uniting all the Norman conquests in Italy into one kingdom with a strong centralized government. Background By 999, Norman adventurers had arrived in southern Italy. By 1016, they were involved in the complex local politics where Lombards were fighting against the Byzantine Empire. These mercenaries fought the enemies of the Italian city-states, but in the following century they gradually became the rulers of the major polities south of Rome. Roger I ruled the county of Sicily at the time of the birth of his youngest son, Roger, at Melito, Calabria, in 1095. Roger I's nephew, Roger Borsa, was the Duke of Apulia and Calabria, and his great-nephew, Richard II of Capua, was the Prince of Capua. Alongside these three major rulers were a large number of minor counts, who effectively exercised sovereign power in their own localities. These counts at least nominally owed allegiance to one of these three Norman rulers, but such allegiance was usually weak and often ignored. When Roger I died in 1101, his young son, Simon of Hawkville, became count, with his mother Adelaide del Vasto as regent. Simon died four years later in 1105, at the age of 12. Adelaide continued as regent to her younger son Roger, who was just nine years old. Reign. Rise to power in Sicily upon the death of his elder brother, Simon of Hauteville, in 1105. Roger inherited the county of Sicily under the regency of his mother, Adelaide del Vasto. His mother was assisted by such notables as Christodulus, the emir of Palermo. In 1109, Byzantine Emperor Alexios I Komnenos bestowed upon him the title of Protonobilissimos in recognition of his knowledge of the Byzantine court. In the summer of 1110, Roger was visited by the Norwegian king Sigurd Jorsalfair, who was on his way to Jerusalem. The story suggests that Sigurd gave Roger the name King of Sicily, 20 years before he actually obtained this title. In 1112, at the age of 16, Roger began his personal rule, being named Now Knight, now Count of Sicily and Calabria, in a charter document dated 12 June 1112. In 1117, his mother, who had married Baldwin I of Jerusalem, returned to Sicily, since the Patriarch of Jerusalem had declared the marriage invalid. Roger seems to have felt the slight, and this might explain his later reluctance to go crusading. Roger married his first wife, Elvira, daughter of Alfonso VI of Castile, and his fourth queen, Isabella, who may be identical to his former concubine, the converted Moor, Zayda, baptized Isabella. In 1122, William II, the Duke of Apulia, who was fighting with Count Jordan of Ariano, offered to renounce his remaining claims to Sicily as well as a part of Calabria. Roger, in exchange, provided William with 600 knights and access to money for his campaign. Rise to power in southern Italy when William II of Apulia died childless in July 1127. Roger claimed all Hauteville family possessions in the peninsula as well as the overlordship of the Principality of Capua, which had been nominally given to Apulia almost 30 years earlier. However, the union of Sicily and Apulia was resisted by Pope Honorius II and by the subjects of the duchy itself. Royal investiture The popes had long been suspicious of the growth of Norman power in southern Italy, and at Capua in December. The Pope preached a crusade against Roger, setting Robert II of Capua and Ranulf II of a life against him. After this coalition failed, in August 1128 Honorius invested Roger at Benevento as Duke of Apulia. The baronial resistance, backed by Naples, Bari, Salerno, and other cities whose aim was civic freedom, gave way. In September 1129 Roger was generally recognized as Duke of Apulia by Sergius VII of Naples, Robert of Capua, and the rest. 
He began it once to enforce order in the duchy, where ducal power had long been fading. On the death of Pope Honorius in February 1130 there were two claimants to the papal throne. Roger supported anti-Pope Anacletus II against Innocent II. The reward was a crown, and, on 27 September 1130, Anacletus a papal bull made Roger king of Sicily. He was crowned in Palermo on Christmas Day 1130. Roger II's elaborate royal mantle bears the date 528 of the Islamic calendar, therefore it could not be used for his coronation. It was later used as coronation cloak by the Holy Roman Emperors and is now in the imperial treasury in Vienna. Peninsula rebellions this plunged Roger into a ten-year war. The famous Bernard of Clairvaux, Innocent's champion, organized a coalition against Anacletus and his half-heathen king. He was joined by Louis VI of France, Henry I of England, and the Lothair III, Holy Roman Emperor. Meanwhile, southern Italy revolted. In 1130, the Duchy of Amalfi revolted and in 1131, Roger sent John of Palermo across the Strait of Messina to join up with a royal troop from Apulia in Calabria and march on Amalfi by land while George of Antioch blockaded the town by sea and set up a base on Capri. Amalfi soon capitulated. In 1132, Roger sent Robert II of Capua and Ranulf II of a life to Rome in a show of force in support of Anacletus. While they were away, Roger's half-sister Matilda, Ranulf's wife, fled to Roger claiming abuse. Simultaneously, Roger annexed Ranulf's brother's county of Avellino. Ranulf demanded the restitution of both wife and countship. Both were denied, and Ranulf left Rome against orders, with Robert following. First Roger dealt with a rebellion in Apulia, where he defeated and deposed Grimwald, Prince of Bari, replacing him with his second son Tancred. Meanwhile, Robert and Ranulf took papal Benevento. Roger went to meet him but was defeated at the Battle of Nocera on 25 July 1132. Roger retreated to Salerno. The next year, Lothair III came down to Rome for his imperial coronation. The rebel leaders met him there, but they were refused help because Lothair's force was too small. With the emperor's departure, divisions in his opponent's ranks allowed Roger to reverse his fortunes. By July 1134, Roger's troops had forced Ranulf, Sergius, and the other ringleaders to submit. Robert was expelled from Capua and Roger installed his third son, Alfonso of Hortville as Prince of Capua. Roger II's eldest son Roger was given the title of Duke of Apulia. Meanwhile, Lothair's contemplated attack upon Roger had gained the backing of Pisa, Genoa, and the Byzantine Emperor John II each of whom feared the growth of a powerful Norman kingdom. A Pisan fleet led by the exiled Prince of Capua dropped anchor off Naples in 1135. Ranulf joined Robert and Sergius there, encouraged by news coming from Sicily that Roger was fatally ill or even already dead. The important fortress of Iversa, among others, passed to the rebels and only Capua resisted, under the royal chancellor, Guarin. On June 5, however, Roger disembarked in Salerno, much to the surprise of all the mainland provinces. The royal army, split into several forces, easily conquered Aversa and even a life, the base of the natural rebel leader, Ranulf. Most of the rebels took refuge in Naples, which was besieged in July, but despite poor health conditions within the city, Roger was not able to take it, and returned to Messina late in the year. Imperial invasion in 1136, the long-awaited imperial army, led by Lothair and the Duke of Bavaria, Henry the Proud, descended the peninsula to support the three rebels. Henry, Robert, and Ranulf took a large contingent of troops to besiege the peninsula capital of the kingdom, Salerno. Roger remained in Sicily, leaving its mainland garrisons helpless under the Chancellor Robert of Selby. 
while even the Byzantine Emperor John II Comnenus sent subsidies to Lothair, Salerno surrendered, and the large army of Germans and Normans marched to the very south of Apulia. There, in June 1137, Lothair besieged and took Bari. At San Severino, after the victorious campaign, he and the Pope jointly invested Ranulf as Duke of Apulia, and the Emperor then retired to Germany. Roger, freed from the utmost danger, immediately disembarked in Calabria, at Trapea, with 400 knights and other troops, probably mostly Muslims. After having been welcomed by the Salernitans, he recovered ground in Campania, sacking Pozzuoli, Alife, Capua, and Avellino. Sergius, terrified, was forced to acknowledge him as overlord of Naples and switch his allegiance to Anacletus. That moment marked the fall of an independent Neapolitan duchy, and thereafter the ancient city was fully integrated into the Norman realm. From there Roger moved to Benevento and northern Apulia, where Duke Ranulf, although steadily losing his bases of power, had some German troops plus some 1,500 knights from the cities of Melfi, Trana, Troia, and Bari who were ready to die rather than lead a miserable life. On 30 October 1137, at the Battle of Rignano, the younger Roger and his father, with Sergius of Naples, met the defensive army of Duke Ranulf. It was the greatest defeat of Roger II's career. His son fought with courage, and Sergius died honorably in battle, but Roger himself fled the field to Salerno. It capped Ranulf's meteoric career. Twice victor over Roger, Anacletus II died in January 1138, but Innocent II refused to reconcile with the king. In spring 1138, the royal army invaded the Principality of Capua, with the precise intent of avoiding a pitched battle and of dispersing Ranulf's army with a series of marches through difficult terrain. While the Count of Alife hesitated, Roger, now supported by Benevento, destroyed all the rebels' castles in the region, capturing an immense booty. Ranulf himself, who had taken refuge in his capital Troia, died of malaric fever on 30 April 1139. Later, Roger exhumed his body from his grave in Troia Cathedral and threw it in a ditch, only to repent subsequently and rebury him decently. At this time, Sergius being dead, Alfonso was elected to replace him and together with his brother Roger went off to conquer the Abruzzi. Consolidation of kingship after the death of Anacletus in January 1138, Roger had sought the confirmation of his title from Innocent. However, the Pope wanted an independent principality of Capua as a buffer state between the Kingdom of Sicily and the Papal States, something Roger would not accept. In the summer of 1139, Innocent II invaded the kingdom with a large army, but was ambushed at Galluccio on, southeast of present-day Casino, by Roger's son and was captured. Three days later, by the Treaty of Miniano, the Pope proclaimed Roger II Rex Siciliae de Cartus Apulia a Principatus Capuri. The boundaries of his regno were only later fixed by a truce with the Pope in October 1144. These lands were for the next seven centuries to constitute the kingdoms of Naples and Sicily. In 1139, Bari, the 50,000 inhabitants of which had remained unscathed behind its massive walls during the wars of the past year, decided to surrender. The excellent Assamuse princeps Jack Wintis, who had led the rebellion of the city, was hanged together with many of his followers but the city avoided being sacked. Roger's execution of the prince and his counsellors was perhaps the most violent act of his life. While his sons overcame pockets of resistance on the mainland, on 5 November 1139 Roger returned to Palermo to plan a great act of legislation. The Assizes of Ariano, an attempt to establish his dominions in southern Italy as a coherent state. He returned to check on his son's progress in 1140 and then went to Ariano, a town central to the peninsula possessions. There he promulgated the great law regulating all Sicilian affairs. It invested the king and his bureaucracy with absolute powers and reduced the authority of the often rebellious vassals. 
While there, centralizing his kingdom, Roger declared a new standard coinage, named after the Duchy of Apulia, the Ducat. Economy Roger's reforms in laws and administration not only aimed to strengthen his rule but also to improve the economic standing of Sicily and southern Italy. He was very concerned to gain money, but hardly very prodigal in expending it. In 1140 at his assembly at Ariano he introduced new coinage to make it easier to trade with the rest of the Mediterranean as there were smaller denominations of the previous coins, to allow more accurate and efficient trading. However, although this new coinage made long-distance trade easier it was very detrimental to local trade which spread hatred throughout Italy. By the 1150s, most of this coinage was no longer in use and soon after, it disappeared altogether. Nevertheless, the controversy over the coinage did not hinder the kingdom's prosperity. Roger II had not only acquired large wealth through his royal patrimony but also through his military campaigns and their financial rewards. For example, gold and silver were gained through the campaigns in Apulia in 1133 and Greece in 1147. Sicily's geographic situation at the center of Mediterranean made it a brilliant location for trade with Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. Its primary export was durum wheat, others included foods like cheese and vine fruits. Unlike other states, Sicily also had a strong political and military standing so its merchants were supported and to some extent protected. This standing allowed for an increase in internal trade and a stronger market which led to noticeable developments in agriculture. Later reign Roger had now become one of the greatest kings in Europe. At Palermo, he gathered round him distinguished men of various races such as the famous Arab geographer Muhammad al-Idrizi and the Greek historian Nilus Doxopatrius. The king welcomed the learned and practiced toleration towards the several creeds, races and languages of his realm. To administer his domain he hired many Greeks and Arabs, who were trained in long-established traditions of centralized government. He was served by men of diverse nationality, such as the Englishman Thomas Brunn, a kind of the Curia and in the fleet, first by Christodulus and then George of Antioch, whom he made in 1132 Amiratus Amiratorum or Emir of Emirs, in effect Prime Vizier. Roger made Sicily the leading maritime power in the Mediterranean. A powerful fleet was built up under several admirals, or emirs, of whom the greatest was George, formerly in the service of the Muslim prince of Mardia. Mainly thanks to him, a series of conquests were made on the African coast. From 1135 Roger II started to conquer the coast of Tunisia and enlarge his dominions. Tripoli was captured in 1146 and Cape Bona in 1148. These conquests were lost in the reign of Roger's successor William, however, and never formed an integral part of the kingdom in southern Italy. The Second Crusade offered Roger an opportunity to revive attacks on the Byzantine Empire, the traditional Norman enemy to the east. It also afforded him an opportunity, through the agency of Thaudwin, a cardinal ever vigilant for crusade supporters to strike up a correspondence with Conrad III of Germany in an effort to break his alliance with Manuel I Comnenus. Roger himself never went on an expedition against Byzantium, instead handing command to the skillful George. In 1147, George set sail from Mortranto with 70 galleys to attack Corfu. According to Nicetas Choniates, the island capitulated thanks to George's bribes, welcoming the Normans as their liberators. Leaving a garrison of 1,000 men, George sailed on to the Peloponnesus. He sacked Athens and quickly moved on to the Aegean Islands. He ravaged the coast all along Euboea and the Gulf of Corinth and penetrated as far as Thebes, Greece, where he pillaged the silk factories and carried off the Jewish damask, brocade, and silk weavers, taking them back to Palermo where they formed the basis for the Sicilian silk industry. 
George capped the expedition with the sack of Corinth, in which the relics of St. Theodore were stolen, and then returned to Sicily. In 1149, however, Corfu was retaken. George went on a punitive expedition against Constantinople, but could not land and instead defied the Byzantine emperor by firing arrows against the palace windows. Despite this act, his expedition left no enduring effects. Roger died at Palermo on 26 February 1154 and was buried in the Cathedral of Palermo. He was succeeded by his fourth son, William. Roger is the subject of King Roger, a 1926 opera by Polish composer Karol Zymanowski. The last months of his life are also featured in Tariq Ali's book A Sultan in Palermo. Study or am Universitas Ruggero II, a private non-traditional university connected to Academia Normana was incorporated in the U.S. on April 30, 2001 in honor of this king. Family Roger's first marriage was in 1117 to Elvira of Castile, a daughter of King Alfonso VI of Castile. When she died, rumors flew that Roger had died as well, as his grief had made him a recluse. They had six children. Roger, heir, Duke of Apulia, possibly also Count of Lecce, Tancred, Prince of Barry, Alfonso, Prince of Capua and Duke of Naples, a daughter, William, his successor, Duke of Apulia, Henry. Roger's second marriage was in 1149 to Sibylla of Burgundy, daughter of Hugh II, Duke of Burgundy. They had two children, Henry stillborn child. Roger's third marriage was in 1151 to Beatrice of Rethel, a grandniece of King Baldwin II of Jerusalem. They had one daughter, Constance, who married with the Emperor Henry VI, later King of Sicily in his right. Roger also had five known illegitimate children, by a daughter of Hugsai, Count of Malise. Simon, who became Prince of Taranto in 1144, with unknown mistresses, a daughter, wife of Rodrigo Garces, a daughter, wife of the Neapolitan nobleman Adam, Clenenza, married Hughes II, Count of Malise, Adeliza married firstly Jocelyn, Count of Loreto, and secondly Robert of Bassenville, Count of Loritello. Marina, married the great Admiral Margaritus of Brindisi.